Sabbath laws. Jubilees and Beta Israel, Halakha alike, are extremely severe in the matter of Sabbath desa, desecration. The Sabbath commandments are expressed in terms of absolute and scrupulous abstention from any type of work. Any transgression invokes capital punishment. The express norms of the Tezaza Sabbat are largely based on jubilees. Moreover, Talmudic Halakha distinguishes between the scriptural principal commandments, Avat Melakha, uh, fathers of work, which includes derivative forms of forbidden labor and rabbinic prohibitions relating to the Sabbath call Shuba, rest, whereas Jubilees and Beta Israelica make no such distinctions. All Sabbath prohibitions are treated by Jubilees as being scriptural, principal, and therefore punishable by death. I report here the conclusions of my study about four main typical transgressions thus punishable in the Jubilees and T. Azaza Sandbat. Sexual Intercourse on the Sabbath The prohibition of cohabitation on the Sabbath is to be found among earlier sects as S-E-C-T-S such as the Samaritans and Sadducees, as well as later sects, such as the Karyats. Sexual intercourse on the Sabbath is regarded by contrast in Talmudic Halakha as Oneg Shabbat, or Sabbath pleasure, TB Baba, comma, 82A, Ketuba, 62B. That's the in a parent. There is no explicit scripture source for the prohibition. However, it may be understood from the textual proximity in Jubilees 50 verse 8 of desecration of that day Sabbath to whoever lies with his wife that the prohibition derives from the holiness of the Sabbath. Exodus 20 verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Jubilee states the prohibition of Tuma defilement on the Sabbath, chapter 2, verse 25. Ascolas cites another version of this verse. Whoever defiles this day and lies with his wife shall die. The concept is that uncleanness or defilement cannot coincide with holiness. He who lies carnally with a woman shall be unclean until the evening. Leviticus 15 verse 18. In Karyat Halakha, the prohibition originates from the book of precepts of Anon. Anon based it on the verse six days, thou shalt work, but on the seventh day thou shalt rest in plowing time and in harvest thou shalt rest. Exodus 34 verse 21. Interpreting plowing as marital intercourse. This interpretation of Anon is rejected sarcastically by Abin Ezra. Exodus 20 verse 8. Later Karyat sources base the prohibition on the concept of Tuma defilement. Conversation about profane subjects. The prohibition of conversation about profane subjects derives from Isaiah 58 verse 13. If thou turn away thy foot because of the Sabbath and call the Sabbath a delight, thou shalt honor it, not pursuing thy business, nor speaking thereof. Obviously, the prohibition refers first as is common to normative Judaism and the sex to the transaction of any business on the Sabbath. 
The Talmud explains that not pursuing any business means that only profane matters are pro forbidden. But not divine matters, not speaking thereof, means that they, thy conversation on Sabbath shall not be like on weekdays. However, in Jubilees 50 verse 8, the prohibition is wider. Whoever says he will do something on it and in the Damascus Covenant 10 verse 18, it is specified with reference to five different Sabbath prohibitions on lying and four other types of conversation about profane matters. The parallel text in Tiazaza Sambat adds shouting and quarreling. He who speaks aloud or seeks a quarrel, and according to Alba Elias, the prohibition includes four other types of communication, such as lying and cursing. Guard thy tongue and thy voice from uttering lies, evil guile, and abuse. Keep anger from thy heart. These prohibitions, like all Sabbath prohibitions, are considered to be script be of scriptural origin and punished by death. By contrast, rabbinical halakha considerably modified the severity with which talking about profane or secular matters was treated, setting up a difference between scriptural and rabbinical prohibitions. Shiva, C E G Hesav Ta, Shabbat 16. Verse uh, 21, traveling and walking. The prohibition derived from Exodus 16, 29, Abide ye every man in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the Sabbath day. And Isaiah 58, verse 13, If thou turn away thy foot because of the Sabbath, every halakha interpreted the written law literally as a categorical, prohibition of walking on the Sabbath. Although views differed over its nature and its extent, Talmudic Halakha does not include this prohibition among the 39 instances of prohibited works. This is therefore not a scriptural prohibition, but a rabbinical one that prohibits walking outside town beyond a distance of 2,000 cubics, a little more than half a mile. This boundary is also limited to the Sabbath. Bounds known as Tihum Shabbat, Shabbat Limit, TB Sota 30B and Eruven 51A is where that's found. In Jubilees chapter 50 verse 12 it is written, Every man who goes on his way, Albach, holds that this prohibition is absolute, but other scholars approach from Pharisaic, Pharisaic law. Apocryphal sources argue that the Sabbath laws and their penalties are not to be regarded as exceptional, but as a stage or branch of the early Holocaust.